Hey guys and welcome back to Crime Vlogs Weekly. This week we're talking about the case of Chris Watts. So this is a case that a lot of people are going to know about already, especially as Netflix recently released a documentary on the murders. However, there are some people that don't know about the case or perhaps don't know enough detail about the case and the incredible twisted and dark mind of Chris Watts. Social media allows us to document our lives in a more public way. What was once recorded on camcorders was usually only brought out on special occasions where you felt nostalgic, or perhaps your parents want to embarrass you in front of your new girlfriend or boyfriend by showing videos of you as a toddler doing embarrassing things. However, due to social media being so huge over the past few years, a lot of people have started to show their personal lives on social media, a lot like I do in my day-to-day -day job as a freelance writer and influencer. But what likely makes this case so intriguing is that there's a sheer amount of footage available online of the family prior to the murders taking place. The Watts family consisted of Chris Watts, Shannon Watts and their two beautiful daughters Bella and Celeste, otherwise known as Cece for short. Now Chris and Shannon met like most modern day couples do via social media, they met on Facebook. So she got a recommendation from a friend um, to start chatting to Chris and she didn't do it at the start but she got a fairly awful diagnosis of lupus and that's where the connection started between Chris and Shannon. Shannon having been given this diagnosis was in a pretty dark place and she said this in one of the videos that's available online um, and she lost her job of nine years and also lost quite a few friends um, so it seemed like Chris came along at the right time for her and some could say that you know, she was in this vulnerable state and Chris was this knight in shining armour that came along um, and she genuinely thought he was the bee's knees. They clearly hit it off right away and fast forward eight years later and they've got two beautiful girls and Shannon has found a passion at selling um, health supplements online. This was through a direct marketing business which sounds a little bit like companies like Avon where they have representatives. Um, she would advertise the products that she received on her Facebook Lives, which again, there are plenty um, to see on YouTube if you wanted to check these out. And life seemed great on camera. On June the 11th, 2018, Shannon announced the news to Chris that they were expecting their third child and she published this um, announcement on her Facebook page. Again, you can see that announcement on YouTube and you can tell, I mean, that he seems genuinely happy for this news um, and it's just a really nice, normal, loving moment. But just like the saying goes, you never know what's going on behind closed doors. Behind the camera, Chris and Shannon's marriage was falling apart. And this was much to Shannon's dismay. Shannon tried a lot to add spark back into the relationship and to try and convince Chris that, you know, to give it a go and to try and make the effort to salvage their relationship, especially for the sake of these two young children that they had together. However, Chris was becoming more distant. He would separate himself further away from family life and he also separated himself further away from Shannon and their relationship. In the lead up to the murders, Shannon headed over to North Carolina to stay with her parents for a five week vacation whilst Chris stayed at home to work and later joined them for the final week of the vacation. During this time, Shannon was exchanging text messages to Chris. A lot of them would get ignored or have sort of brief responses. And you could tell that Shannon was trying to salvage the relationship. Um, she messaged um, one of her friends quite frequently talking about how she was trying everything she could and that things were just going from bad to worse with Chris. On August the 9th, 2018, Shannon left for a work trip with her friend and work colleague, leaving Chris with the girls. When Shannon returns from her work trip, she arrives at 1.48 a.m., being dropped off by her work colleague and friend, and the surveillance of her arriving back at the home is caught by Chris Watts, the Watts family's neighbour, and also from the Watts family um, door camera that they had, which you can clearly see her arriving home and going in through the door. So the next day, Shannon is reported missing by her colleague and work friend at 1.40 p.m. I think Shannon may have had a doctor's appointment um, for the baby, yet she didn't arrive for this doctor's appointment and therefore the friend got worried because I think they were texting back and forth quite frequently as well and it was unlike her to not message her friend. So that's why she was worried and that's why she called the police. 
So the police arrived to scope out the Watts family property and at this point Chris Watts arrives back from work. Uh, he goes through the garage and opens the front door to let in the police, Shannon's friend, and there's another guy there as well. I'm not quite sure who he is. I'm guessing it's Shannon's friend's son. It looks like her son. There's no bedding on Chris and Shannon's bed either, so things are looking a little bit suspicious from the beginning. Now again, there's so much footage of this case that there is body cam footage of the police entering the property for the first time you've got the police talking you know under muffled whispers kind of going this doesn't seem right and you can see the body language of everyone it's all very tense and there's you know there's eye contact being made between the police and also um shannon's friend as well and it's it's really interesting to watch and to see how everything unfolds I think what's most telling early on and probably what the police officers definitely caught on was that Chris did not seem at all bothered about his wife and his two daughters, one aged four and one aged three, were completely missing. And the behavior that he was displaying on this body cam footage is, it doesn't match up to someone who would have found that their wife and two daughters were missing. It was really casual, he wasn't really fussed, he was answering the questions that the police were asking him very briefly, very bluntly. It just didn't seem right. So after calling friends and family to try and find out where Sean and the girls may be, Chris goes on to do something really stupid, and that is to give interviews to the media. And he was doing the typical spiel that you see whenever anyone goes missing, and he just wanted his family back, and he doesn't know where they are, and he's worried about them. But everything he was saying, his facial expressions were so... There was no, there was no emotion there, which is, you know makes sense when you find out later what happened. Police arrest Chris later that day and it turns out he knows a lot more than he's let on. So it turns out that he had a mistress and that he was planning on leaving Shannon for this new woman. And like most murderers do, the only option that he had to get out of the commitments that he had in life was to brutally murder his wife, Shannon, and their two gorgeous girls, Bella and Celeste. So let's rewind because there's a lot of information that's needed to unpack um, and information that wasn't known prior to the confession in terms of the lead up of the deaths of Shannon and her girls. As I mentioned before, Shannon did everything and anything she could to salvage the relationship and she was messaging one of her friends back and forth expressing her heartbreak and emotional turmoil that she was going through, knowing that the relationship was possibly coming to an end and that the Chris she knew wasn't the same Chris anymore. After Shannon returned to the family home from the business trip, it transpires that Chris and Shannon had an argument. Chris had said that he was leaving her and that he had another woman in his life and apparently Shannon retaliated with, well, you'll never see the kids again. Apparently this angered Chris and he strangled her to death. Now this is something that he later confessed to in his interview, but initially when he was first questioned, he said that Shannon in a fit of rage after being, you know, finding out that Chris was cheating on her, went into the girl's bedroom and killed them. And Chris then retaliated on her killing the kids by strangling her. However, later on in his confession, he said that this wasn't true and that in fact Bella had walked in to the room and saw that something was wrong with her mum, Shannon, and asked Chris what's wrong with mummy. Chris would then put the girls in the back of the truck and Shannon's body wrapped in a bed sheet. And this was all footage that was partially caught on the neighbor's CCTV. Um, you can't really see a huge amount, but you can just see the shadow of Chris passing back and forth um, to the truck and then leaving with the truck. So he then left the property and drove to a remote area where he worked and where there were these two big oil tankers. So Chris got out, went around to the back where the girls were and he smothered Celeste with her favorite blanket and then disposed of her body in the oil tanker and then came back to Bella and did the same thing to her. 
And the details of this are quite graphic and harrowing, so if you don't want to listen to this, I would recommend skipping ahead maybe 25, 30 seconds so that you don't have to hear it. When he came back to Bella, Bella had obviously seen all this happening and she'd at this point unbuckled her belt and I think was trying to get out of the vehicle and she'd seen her own dad kill um, her sister and possibly walked in to seeing her mum dead on the bed and her last words were daddy no as Chris smothered her and disposed of her body in the oil tanker. When he was disposing of the bodies in the oil tanker he was actually trying to push the bodies down an eight inch hole which meant that these poor girls bodies were being scraped as they were going into the hole and I just can't, this is what is so crazy about these murderers and serial killers is that you can't fathom what how they could do that. That's their own flesh and blood, that's their own children. After disposing of their children's bodies, he then buried Shannon in a shallow grave. I know these details are truly awful, but it paints a picture of Chris Watts and just how emotionless and evil he was towards his own family. During the breakdown of the marriage, Chris struck up a relationship with a friend and work colleague called Nicole Kessinger. This is an affair that had started before Shannon had announced the pregnancy of her third child and I think some believe it happened quite a considerable time before that. And Chris would go out on dates with Nicole and would ignore any phone calls that he got from Shannon at the time. And on the weekend of Shannon's work business trip, he actually hired a babysitter in order to go out on a date with Nicole. So Nicole said in her interviews and has been pretty adamant from the get-go that she had no awareness that Shannon existed and no idea that you know this whole family unit existed either. However Nicole's activity online would say otherwise. She had googled Shannon's name and she was very active on Facebook as well as well as Shannon being active on Facebook. It would have been near enough impossible for Nicole not to discover that Chris had a partner and two children. And like I mentioned previously, the police visiting the property for the first time when Chris let them in, you could tell things didn't seem right and the police, you could tell they were suspicious from the beginning as well as Shannon's friend. And Chris was actually texting his mistress, Nicole, during that whole time and he was also messaging, I think, his lawyer regarding the sale of the property as well that they lived in. Um, which is bizarre and it, you can see the text messages, I'll put them up on the screen and the lawyer's asking like why isn't Shannon involved in this and he's like oh they've gone missing and the, the lawyer's just been like blindsided, he's like oh my god, oh my god I'm so sorry, like sending thoughts and prayers and it's just casually dropped into a conversation by a text that because Shannon's not involved is due to the fact that his whole family have just gone missing. The most damning footage alongside the interviews that he did with the media, which just didn't sit right with a lot of people, was the footage of the neighbours CCTV. Now this CCTV footage, it doesn't seem as if Chris was aware that it existed and obviously it shows the footage of Chris taking things back and forth um, to his truck and again this is footage that you can see online and you can see him watching the footage and you can see the moment of realisation where he goes oh f I am screwed. What do you think would happen? You get away with it? So we obviously don't know what was going on behind closed doors and when the camera stopped rolling and I think that's the case for most relationships. You, We just don't know what was going on with Chris and Shannon. We don't know what the dynamic was. Um, we can never really know what it was like. I think Chris had simply fallen out of love with Shannon and perhaps he was the breadwinner of the family seeing as Shannon was working for this health supplement company maybe he felt that he had a bigger responsibility towards the girls in terms of the financial aspect and supporting them if they were to divorce. Chris could have easily divorced Shannon and if Shannon had said that he would never see his kids again and that he retaliated by strangling her, it doesn't quite align with the fact that he 
if he were if he were told that then he could just leave and he could spend the rest of his life with his mistress and play happy families i think the reality of his mindset and what he wanted to do was that if he could wipe out his whole family then he would have no financial responsibilities and he could essentially start his life from scratch with uh, nicole i feel like they may have argued or knowing that chris was in talks with his lawyer about putting the property up for sale it did seem like this was probably premeditated and have been planned for a while and so maybe they had an argument or maybe chris just killed her while she was sleeping i also don't buy the fact that nicole had no idea what was going on and that she didn't have any involvement with the whole situation i don't think she took part in the murders i don't think she knew to that extent but i definitely think she was more aware of the family and Shannon um, than she said. Regardless of what was going on in their lives, Chris could have simply walked away. He could have divorced Shannon and just lived with whatever embarrassment, guilt, or shame that he would have got from you know leaving his family um, with two kids and just moving on with his mistress. But instead, he chose to kill his whole family. You know, two little girls who had their whole lives ahead of them and they were cut short brutally and they adored him. They looked up to him so much. And Shannon, who was just trying to salvage her marriage and save it, and she was also expecting a baby boy. I would also highly recommend you watch the Netflix documentary. Netflix are doing some really great documentaries at the moment on real crime. So I would definitely watch the one, I think it's called The Family Next Door. Um, it goes into a lot more detail and shows a lot more of the footage than I've shown in this video. Chris pleaded guilty to first degree murder and was handed five life sentences without the possibility of parole, which means that he's never getting out. Do let me know in the comments below what you think of this case and make sure to let me know of any information that I've missed out on my research. Make sure to let me know what cases you want me to cover in my next video. Don't forget to like and subscribe guys and make sure to click that bell notification. It'll notify you every time I upload a video and I'll see you guys next week. Bye guys!